Max. They're fantastic. If I had to pick any of the Battletech licensed universe, I'd pick Mech Commander any day of the week. Although I like my first person Mech Warrior simulators, there's something about Mech Commander that makes it feel like a true war game. Unlike other mech and strategy games, you're not in control of a single mech or even producing your army for an attack. Instead, you are a tactical operations officer sending orders to your mech warriors in the battlefield. Almost like a game of chess, but with mechs. Introducing Mech Commander, developed by FASA, FASA, FASA Interactive and published by Microprose in June of 1998 for Windows PCs. Mech Commander comes in a big box, which lets you know that it is part of the Battletech universe, while claiming to be THE first Mook Warrior game of Tactical Command. The back of the box has some screenshots of the game itself and a lot of info on being a true battlefield strategy game. Opening the box we get a Microprose catalog with some more games. Hey, Worms 2! We get a pamphlet advertising Mecha Madness, because Max, and a registration card. A substantial Mech Warrior Battletech reference guide with lots of detailed information on all those mechs, and I mean really detailed, you get not only the name, but armor type, chassis, speed, electronics, etc. The list goes on and on. We also get a beefy Mac Commander Tactical Interface Users Manual covering strategy, logistics, combat environment and more mechs, this time in full color. I mean look at it, it truly feels like a war strategy report with this military look, I love it. Finally we get the game in a very circular compact disc. And Mac Commander starts with some logos, and some more logos, and 90s full motion video, followed by some 90s CG. This is the perfect formula. 90s plus FMV plus CG equals awesomeness. That's the last contact. Moving to escort position. Roger that. Thanks for the assist. Mech base, ship of ready status. Combat operations are commencing. Attention all that. Prepare for immediate gravity. Mech Commanders, report landing zone status. Alpha landing zone, all clear. Bravo zone, clear. Delta zone, clear. Panther, I need Charlie zone status, report. In all seriousness, aside from the FMV compression, the scenes are pretty good. I would say not only good, but above average acting. In fact, this intro is all you need to know about the game. You're at war and in control of the Zulu company, of the first Devian guards during Operation Bulldog. I would give two thumbs up for the awesome intro. After that we are greeted with the main menu with lots of main options, where one can start a new game, either the original or the expansion, because I'm showing Mac Commander Gold, which includes the 1999 expansion entitled Desperate Measures. You can also play a solo mission, multiplayer, load and save games, preferences to adjust settings like the difficulty, we'll get into that later, watch the great intro one more time and quit the game. So let's dive into the original campaign, shall we? Right off the bat one can see that Mech Commander isn't your regular real-time strategy game. In fact, Mech Commander assumes the form of an RTT or real-time tactics. Unlike your typical RTS where you're thrown into the game and follow a tutorial on how to build infrastructures and war units, in Mech Commander you are in the briefing room, let's call it that, where you have access to the mission details. 
We can also set the max we want to use in any given mission, while paying attention to the drop weight. You also have access to the Perseus menu, where one can buy new mechs, hire new warriors, aka pilots, upgrades and weapons. It also features the uh, mech bay for repairing your mechs, upgrade them, have new mechs damage in combat and fix them as you wish. So the planning is done before you enter the battlefield, much like in real life I assume. I've never been to war so I don't know. After the briefing and selecting the only three mechs available at the beginning, you're off to the battlefield and, once more, Mech Commander is very different from an RTS. You have those three units and those three units only. Mech Commander is a 2D animated game shown in a isometric view, popular in other games from that time, and despite the game's 2D visuals, you never really know it. The vehicles are so well done and the animation so fluid from perspective to perspective that the sense of depth is just perfect. You're a mech commander for an inner sphere force sent to win territory from the clans so that the IS can establish a foothold on the verdant planet Port Harthur. Through escort, seek and destroy and scouting missions, you fill the team of up to 12 battle mechs fostering pilots and equipment like uh, precious action figures that run out of ammo, need to be repaired and can suffer permanent death. And that ownership over your mechs and pilots is at the core of the experience. Because you play an off-site commander telling your troops what to do, you don't actually control your individual mechs to the extent that you could when you were at the helm in games like McWarrior 2. To that end, you don't need to worry about your mechs overheating or keeping their targets in sight. Your mech warriors will manage themselves in combat as best as they can. That won't necessarily amount to much, of course. A green recruit will hardly be able to hit the broadside of a barn, let alone a fast-moving smoke Jaguar clan battle mech. Proceeding as ordered. Eat that. One less enemy crawler. Executing your order. This is Hawk. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Proceeding as ordered. One left enemy crawler. Fortunately, your pilots who fight and survive through missions will gain experience and aptitude, both in maneuvering and using weapons, and only such veterans will capably control bigger and tougher machines. Because your pilots will do their dirty work on their own, all that's left for you to do is to tell them where to go. That's not an easy task though. Your enemy will always have greater firepower on its side, so you need to win through strategic placement. Having your tougher mechs draw enemy fire while your faster ones run around to attack from behind becomes an invaluable strategy. Ah, all those times I heard about flanking the enemy. Yes, this is the game where I put all those movie experiences to work. Proceeding as ordered. I think I have a contact. You must otherwise tread carefully about the map, as your scanners are more effective when your mechs are inert. A bit more strategy lies in the proficient use of available artillery strikes and other special devices, but ultimately, Mech Commander is a simple game to play. There are a few downsides to this simplicity though. For one thing, you cannot order your mechs to move in formation. A smaller mech will always move faster than a larger and stronger one. There is no good way to keep your bigger units in front of your battle formation, which renders the aforementioned tactic of diversionary flanking far more difficult to achieve than it should be. True to the Battletech name, at least a third of your time might be spent customizing. Got one. Let's here. They've got me range. Got it, sir. Wait here. One less enemy crawler. Firing at range. Got it, sir. Let's here. Got it. I got him.
Tuning a medium range energy weapons or uh, piecing together a dual having auto cannon wielding atlas for short range destruction is a gratifying pause between battles. And though they were extremely fragile, the addition of uh, single use vehicles, including scout trucks, repair vehicles, missile tanks, and uh, mine layers, augmented your arsenal in a way that allowed for creative tactics such as using a uh, jump jet equipped Raven to sneak into a base and steal control of an uh, enemy's turret control system, then mining the doorstep. It's Mac Commander's salvage mechanic that drives everything important. Every kill is an opportunity to add spare parts or a whole new walking tank to your inventory. The feeling of exploding a Mac, the sound of air being flushed away, and a 5 pixel escape pod streaking up the screen immediately keys loot hunger. Faza did limit the complexity of what you could customize though. For example, it is simplified, weapons fire on a cooldown timer and you don't allocate heat sinks, and the game determines where weapons reside on your mechs, not you. But the modular nature of mechs is uh, meaningful where it counts. Combat, that is. Giant robot fights are wonderfully animated. A vulture with a busted black limbs. Missiling the arm of a Maserati removes its deadly PPCs. Critical hits knock mechs flat on their back. And when you're on the receiving end of the attacks, you find yourself in that same situation. If you lose the arm that held your uh, auto cannon, You'll have to rely on your remaining lasers or uh, SRMs to finish the mission. Mac Commander implicitly splits your role as a player. You have to be an engineer and a tactician, oscillating between management and combat, returning to missions that you couldn't beat with creative loadouts. Mac Commander was the first game in the Battletech series to add tactician to the gameplay and it holds up remarkably well as a real-time tactics game. Over dozens of escort, search and destroy and scouting missions, you command as many as 3 lances or 12 mechs at a time, waypointing them away from explosive fuel drums and out of the range of turrets as you duel with light, medium, heavy and assault class enemy mechs. While Mech Commander's progression system for pilots is limited by modern standards, Mech Warriors can indeed get better at their job and make a difference in the battlefield. They can also permanently die, but hey, they have a set of individual voice lines which are charming enough. More fun is the battlefield work of trying to shave off just enough of that enemy Maserati or Thor so that you can salvage it, repair it, and bring it back as one of your own to your next battle. Here comes trouble. Okay, sir, you got it. Okay, sir, you got it. The shuttle sent them off. They've got me range. Firing at range. Max destroyed. Got it, sir. Who wants some of this? Got it, sir. Got it, sir. Mission objective. Mech Commander is awesome, and uh, the thing that really brings me back to the game is the customization. Not just of the mechs, though, as far as optimization goes, the Inner Sphere mechs are just as modular as the Clan Ominous, and by the way, Mac Commander is abandonware, so grab yourself a copy of the game, get to your command post, and conquer every battle. As long as you are there and uh, enjoyed this video, why not check the others that I have right here on the channel? Leave a like in this one and subscribe to the channel because your support is very much appreciated. As always, thank you very much for watching this, and until my next video, take care. Him. I'll do what I can. Taking enemy fire. Got it, sir. Hunter here. Fair press for everyone.